Hey everyone, this is Freddie with Superbike Unlimited and today we're gonna bring you another really good update on our 450 SMR Supermoto project. We've uh, been really happy with how that thing's coming along and it's time to do some really nice upgrades. I'm super excited because um, we're gonna just take this thing to the next level in this video. I'm gonna go over a handful of things. One thing is not necessarily gonna add a big amount of performance, but just one of those touches that we've really been waiting on. We had some stuff ordered and it's been a few weeks and now they're here. We've got our Alpina Supermoto wheels in stock. And you know, I really just wanted to do something really cool that was sort of subtle, but also had a, had a nice pop to it. And I think that these Alpinas are gonna really hit that mark. Um, the we've got of course the standard sizes here 16 and a half front 17 rear and we did order an extra 16 front it's still in the box i don't have any tires for that yet so we're going to try out the uh Michelin, uh front tire and probably rear for that matter but we don't have them yet and that's something that's just going to come later but really love the way those look we're going to mount those up of course we've got the tie hardware and stuff and it'll be nice to have an extra set of wheels specifically an extra rear so for at the cart track or something want to shred some tires up we can maybe bring you know a, a, a harder compound and a softer one or whatever so that's what we've got here we're going to go ahead and uh and get these things ready to mount up and um from there we will show you the next step of upgrades we've got a few other nice bits coming in um right around the time that we wrap this up we should have some tasty pieces that have arrived that are going to help us really up the performance of this machine so more on that later. Okay, I'm kind of relegated over here to one of the, the holes in the shop because we're really slammed preparing uh, our super bike for some racing this weekend as well as some customer stuff. So don't mind my uh, kind of, I'm hanging out by the trash can here. So, that's, <laughs> But we're gonna get the job done still. Um, I've gone ahead and mounted the, uh, the front wheel here and I'm kind of just doing this solo because it's just me uh, trying to get this knocked out for you guys. And I wanted to see what these things look like. I want to say I probably should be getting ready to go race this weekend, but I'm super excited about these. And I just want to at least see what they look like mounted up. So got the front ready to go. And this is what we've got. I really like that. I think that it's just looks so much better, matches the theme of the motorcycle. Um, you've got, I think really just the black spokes and the gray accents. It all just looks really good. So now, of course, this is our front wheel that we're not going to use now because we don't have that tire. But we do have our rear fitted another K1 onto it. And of course, we are going to use this orange sprocket. Didn't want to go crazy, but you know, I don't think it looks bad. I wouldn't have minded using a black one, but I think this looks pretty cool, actually. So we're going to roll with that for now. All we had in stock was this or that silver color like the stock one. I, th I think this looks better for this wheel. So going to do that. I might see if I can come up with a black one. And we're gonna use our tie hardware, just like on the other one. I think that adds a really nice pop of color to it. These are our warp nine bits. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with them. So far the quality has been super consistent and not had any issues out of this stuff at all. Um, so there we go. That's kind of gonna be what we're working with. I do, we are gonna run a lightweight rear rotor that I don't have in stock yet. So I'm not going to fit the rear wheel just yet because I don't want to deal with taking off the other rear rotor and, you know, just wasting time basically. So once those come in, I'm going to fit that up. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and prep this, get it ready to, to, to go on sands the rotor. Uh, and I do need an extra set of the quick change captive spacers from Zeta that we run on that other wheel. I like those a lot. I'm going to keep those in that wheel. I'm going to buy another set for these. I don't think we have any more. So for now, we're just going to wrap this up by putting the... Uh, the warp nine lock nuts and then we have a whole bunch of other really cool stuff coming in like i said in the next coming days um this video is probably going to stretch over about two weeks because i actually have to fly out to laguna seca to do some crew chiefing and race support debt acquisition and things like that but when i get back and you're not going to know it's going to seem like a few seconds the magic of, of the internet um we're going to have all kinds of cool stuff ready to go on this thing and it's going to be when we're done Alrighty, so we're gonna progress along. I mentioned that there was gonna be a lot of cool updates. We still haven't gotten our rear wheel installed. That's probably not gonna go on until maybe, well, I guess probably next week actually, because we're leaving to race big bikes tomorrow. But we do have some, uh, uh, some really cool stuff that's gonna be happening now. So the next thing is there's a certain brand of exhaust you guys have all seen that are used on these and they claim, you know, pretty good power gains and things like that. And 
they've just been really hard to get in the states until now of course superbike unlimited is now importing and distributing dvr exhaust and of course the first thing we're going to do is an apples to apples comparison of dvr which you can see here versus our aero dual exhaust the uh we see some pretty noticeable Sorry about the, the battery died, but what I was saying was that we do see some pretty clear differences right away in the overall design. Tubing thicknesses are totally different, and we have um, obviously the power bomb addition. This is also titanium, this header piece, this basically part that connects directly to the cylinder head. That is uh, a full titanium design, so is obviously much lighter. We can feel just by picking it up, and we're going to weigh some stuff just to compare and uh, I'll look back and watch our old video to reference what we got there. And then the other thing that's really cool is that this is specific to this bike. So it's not going to take anywhere near as much work in theory to install versus what we had to deal with uh, when we did the aero exhaust, which was obviously a lot of work. I had to make a bunch of brackets and stuff. This comes with a lot of things and it's all pretty beefy, but also aluminum. So quite light, new chain guard even heat shielding just lots of really cool stuff to make this as as simple to install as possible so we uh yeah i think it's going to be a pretty nice deal the the key thing is a how much power does it make and what does it sound like hopefully it sounds at least as good as the arrow because we we're quite fond of how that sounded so that's what we're going to do next and then we have honestly a ton of stuff that's going to be getting done i might break this up into two videos because we're going to have a lot of work to do but we're gonna be working on this video and making this thing really fast. We're gonna do everything we can to extract maximum horsepower out of this out of this motorcycle. And I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, you're just gonna have to watch it and see. But uh, I think by the time we're done, we should have a very fast 450. Something else we're gonna do while we've got all this apart is Tex is gonna pop on the CMT carbon fiber fuel tank covers. These, are, I just like them and they are supposed to insulate the, uh, the fuel tank a bit from potential heat, especially with this new exhaust design there's going to be a little more heat potentially going to the fuel tank and uh, colder fuel does perform better so the main honestly though that we just think they look cool so that's one of the big reasons i'm putting them on there but uh, we're going to pop those on first because that's going to be difficult to get to once we install this this pipe so that's up first and then we're going to start trying to get this uh dvr system fitted all right so we've got these mocked up the fitment of this stuff is really not perfect you know like you're gonna see like right here there's a gap text do you think when we put all this together that's you gonna be able to see that no okay the panel covers that okay so stuff that you know i i think they really could improve this frankly and on my side i might even still put some double sticky back there because it's bugging me just seeing that but the uh, uh on my side we added some extra 3m behind some of this stuff where there's gaps but really they could probably just tighten up these molds when everything's put together you're not going to notice it but might as well make it fit properly and on this side you can see it actually looks pretty good before i even put the bolt on but it's just because i let i use some of this stuff um the foam sticky tape and i put a bunch like right here right here and over here and that kind of just sucked it down so um you know it's better than having some gaps but i think once everything's put together it won't look too bad all right, so we're going to go ahead and start weighing everything in. And actually, I'm going to need to put something on the scale to weigh this. And then we will begin doing that. All right, so this is unconventional, but it's accurate. So we're just going to start with the header. We've got 651 grams. We'll write that down. All right, then the right-hand side header, or excuse me, mid-pipe, 342 grams. And then left-hand side. This one's probably gonna weigh more because it has support for the uh, chain. 378 grams, no, 79. One of the silencers. 1465 grams. Other silencer. 1590 grams and then just to be fair we'll weigh this stuff as well extra brackets are 320 all right and uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what the other stuff weighed so we'll reference that in a minute when I watch the video 
All right, so the header's fitted. That's a pretty straightforward process. We did loosen the flange on the actual cylinder head just to make it easier to fit this because it's a tight fit for sure, especially on the right-hand side. But uh, something that Tech's observed, and they send you heat shielding with this product, and it's because this runs very close to the clutch line, and we've routed some electronic stuff there, a quick shifter and such. And we also have a fuel line here. So this stuff, they send you heat shielding to cover those areas. We're gonna use some of our own stuff that we have, we use on super bikes. Um, we're gonna use that and then um, maybe some of their stuff here, I don't know. But um, definitely it puts that exhaust right next to the clutch line. And obviously you don't wanna boil clutch fluid or really any other fluid on the motorcycle that's, ah, okay, and this bracket mounts here. Mm -hmm. So the weight of these two is basically the same from the arrow to the um, DVR and it largely comes down to the brackets. So the DVR comes with all these really pretty beefy brackets. They're not particularly heavy because it's aluminum, but it adds up since we're talking grams here. The brackets, this stuff, and then of course there's really heavy duty Pro Supermoto spec hangers on these things that are Probably over engineered a little, but there must be a reason they make them this way. Maybe because these guys are jumping these things. Um, we're not going to be jumping anything intentionally, so we probably don't need all that. But you know, that's that's part of the design, so that actually pretty much negates any weight loss, which is largely going to be in this header design because this is substantially lighter, but it's also longer. So uh the the key benefit here is going to be does it make more power and does it sound better? So that's going to be. Uh, the next thing that we find out, hopefully we make some power gains and uh, we can see why everybody, you know, around the globe that's racing a professional supermoto just about is running one of these things. Also, techs observe that this is really close to the oil filler cap and we're probably going to have to either switch to a metal one or find a way to shield this. Tex is now tightening up the right hand side mid pipe. You're going to note that this does come with the outer flange or whatever you want to call it, but you do have to steal the rubber grommet and we use the OEM flange for the backside for this comes off the stock header all right so this is coming along honestly there's nothing really exciting happening here it's actually a pretty self-explanatory install you just take the old stuff off put the new stuff on you can see how the brackets go um, we are we did have to take the canister strap off because it was just a little too far rearward on the can so Tex just popped it off and, and mocked up everything else, and we're gonna do that last just to make sure that everything lines up correctly. And uh, then we're gonna go to the other side. All right, so we've got everything kind of mocked up, and we're gonna actually have to drill the subframe to use this mounting bracket. And it's a little, uh, it's a little different than what we expected, frankly, but you know, sometimes that's how it goes with the race parts. And that is the case today, we're gonna be Definitely drilling up some stock stuff. So essentially this has to be drilled so that we can put like a support brace in there. And it's around here somewhere. This guy right here actually goes inside that. And then this bracket, you drill through there and this bracket mounts through that so that there's a, 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 a needed amount of support to hold this thing up while you're, you know, presumably jumping over triples and stuff as a super motor racer. All right, so we've got the hole drilled. Tex is just gonna deburr that hole just so it's not razor sharp and also makes it look a little bit nicer. Just use a deep burring tool for that. And then we're gonna drive the support in. And you can see, you know, it's basically pretty self-explanatory. It's got a beveled edge to match the profile of the uh, subframe inner area. And obviously the six millimeter is gonna line up with the part back here. And then we're gonna drive the uh, this part here to there. So, see how it goes. <laughs> So not too painful. And then we're just gonna mount the bracket to that and we should be good to go. Fire this thing up. Sorry for the air compressor noise. Just did a lot of uh, air drilling. But uh, all right, so now we've had to drill another hole in the lower part of the frame. And essentially you do that so that you can run this captive nut. That's better. 
and uh, that goes on the back. And this, it's gonna take you a minute because I don't know if you can really see, but that's a very thick lower subframe spar there. So yeah, this is just gonna kind of clamp on the back of there. It's shaped perfectly. You'll see this is kind of how it works, just like that. And then you that works as your captive nut. And then you put a bolt through there and off we go. All right, Tex is wrapping up this bracket install. So we have a few other little adjustments to make. We're obviously gonna have to do some plastic cutting which is no surprise at this point. We've already slaughtered this thing for the previous install, but you can see how all this works. Pretty clear, straightforward stuff. Um, and we also just got these in. So I'm really excited to, to mount that rear wheel. We're probably gonna dyno on this tire since it's uh, got some use on it, but we now have everything we need to go ahead and, and mock up the, the, uh, the new rear wheel. All right, so Texas now got this pretty much fully mocked up. We've uh, got all of our tie bolts in place, of course. We haven't colored these yet because they're not visible and we're trying to get this thing put together in a hurry so we can test it before the day is over. It's actually taken the better part of the day getting this thing all set up, but uh, we're pretty much at the end of this now, so we're just gonna put the bodywork back on and uh, put it on the dyno and see what kind of power this thing makes. Uh, the we did go ahead and test fire it just to make sure everything the no exhaust leaks and that kind of thing and it's definitely quieter than it was with the arrow you'll hear that in a minute but uh, hopefully with time this thing will the packing or something will, will loosen up and we'll make some more volume it's a little quieter than I would prefer but um, yeah let's see what it does on the dyno Hey guys, sorry, but I actually have to reshoot this particular results session. For some reason, the video got corrupted when I was just editing this video together. So anyway, um, you've just seen what the 450 did on the dyno with uh, the DVR exhaust in terms of sound. Um, so now let's go ahead and just review the results, get right to it. Here we have overlaid our best prior result with the Arrow and the Cobra ECU, AKA the Taipan as they're calling it now, 57.5 horsepower. <clears throat> with this new exhaust system, we're making a, a, a peak of 59.46, so almost two more horsepower. And uh, up top, we can see there it's regularly making two plus horsepower. Right here, we have a nice delta of about two and a half. Um, as you can see down low, we did lose some power. We've lost, uh, what, approximately four horsepower right here. So that's, well, three and a half. That's Definitely something to consider. However, it's 5,700 RPM. I'm not particularly worried about that kind of loss. I don't think we're gonna spend a lot of time right there. And frankly, um, if anything, that might help us get off the corner at the very edge of the tire. So for now, that's, I think that's a very healthy gain. We've seen big promises from that particular exhaust over the standard system. And after seeing this, I have to say, I think it's they're probably pretty realistic. Um, so, Needless to say, we're going to leave, we're going to leave the DVR on there. <laughs> we, we like the Arrow, but the DVR is uh, that's a huge gain out of just an exhaust system. <clears throat> and I want to point out, I didn't do any tuning. You're probably asking, well, why wouldn't you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Well, for sure, there's some more power to be had in tuning, but we have some other big things that we're about to do in this uh, uh, next video, and uh, we don't have a lot of time. So for that reason, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. We're going to call it. <clears throat> However, you're gonna to wanna to tune in because this is the first part of a two-part video and the next step is squeezing maximum power out of this thing. We have some really, really choice upgrades coming and I think some promising results in store. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment below, and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you shortly.